Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and retirement having. When I sit outside enjoying a little bit of skillet grilling, I'm enjoying what my friend Julio has purchased for me. About three dollars in pot stickers, which in Japanese is gyoza, but that's okay. And it's a little bit better for me than if I were to go eat at a fast food chain restaurant for about the same money. It also allowed me a little bit of extra water and a little bit of extra time to just sit and be fun. You see, I'm of that age where I don't really want to do a lot of moving, and I have that heart condition that I really don't want to agitate. I do appreciate when people bring me things that I'm looking for as a part of my, not prosperity project, but really moving forward project so that I can be just a little bit more comfortable being outside. But when a man has certain color preferences, when his family is doing certain colors and certain things, he really needs to be willing to hear you. You see, what I mean is that there are so many people that want to listen, but then they don't hear. And there's a lot of people who hear, but they don't listen. And they have to really understand that God is always listening. God is always hearing from us. God is always listening to us. God is always watching us. God is always observing us. God is always probably commenting on us to his angel set that he employs to pay attention to the children that he puts into American culture and around the world. You see, the premise is that one, at one time, all the continents were together. And then at one time in ancient history, they split apart. What we know about the Tower of Babel was a time when God split all of the people apart. It's very possible that that Tower of Babel was really the splitting of the continents, which is why I justify that we have all these languages around the world. I know that within the United Nations we have at least 400 uh, different little nations, but I could be wrong about that. I don't really get on encyclopedias anymore, and very few people have the paper brown versions of the Britannica or the other types that used to be found in our libraries and in our homes. Most parents of my generation had a set of encyclopedias on a bookshelf so that we could get there and look up anything we didn't understand. My dad was a big promoment, proponent of self-learning, and if we had a question, say, go to the books, find out. Come back, tell me all about it. And that was my dad. My mom was more our music instructor, our cooking instructor, our sewing instructor, God help me. And openly, I managed, managed to make a B in one of those uh, male-female home economic classes that we had to do all that shit in. But that's because I couldn't sew a hem to save my fucking life. And that's okay. But the reality is, in life, we have moments of time to do things. And I can openly remember in college, they had to take a 3D drawing class, and everybody just would sit around and laugh at me because I just couldn't do it. I could do 2D, I could do things that were mechanical, I could draw anything like that. But when it came to drawing the naked human form, I must admit, I was a little bit modest, a little bit shy, and a little bit, well, I don't say retarded in my abilities, but I just really felt like I shouldn't be there in that room. But other people didn't have a problem with it, so I did my best, and that's all I can do is say put it to best. I think the best thing I got a grade on was some set of uh, cattle uh, bones, but that's okay. I'm not really waxing on for any reason. I'm just saying today was sort of an odd day, but I got to actually sit down and do some things for me without one person pissing on me too much with the exception of Cammy, the marvelous man hugger who kind of pisses all over people and has interactions with people who just get the police called on them. So, isn't that marvelous? And then Julian showed up around that time and my phones and computers started to go a little bit haywire and I didn't appreciate that. And they literally think that they're clever. They're not. In life we have moments of time to speak the truth and just this evening I've been doing a little cooking of my food and just trying to relax and try to decompress from a very busy day of a lot of work and a lot of content and a lot of uh, content management and intellectual content development, a car drives up to the staple shop with a man and woman in it, and it's some sort of Subaru. I wouldn't say it's an Outback, but it's one of these wagon units, and it's white. And as the woman drives by, who's in the passenger seat, she's looking at me with a frown as my friend Julio drives away. And I'm just sitting there going, what in the world is she giving me a frown for? So they stand uh, and, and sit or in a parking position outside the front door, and the front gate and I guess they're waiting for one of the employees that's coming out who's apparently lost his vehicle or he's just not using it anymore who knows but he there's a pickup for that man and every day he's got a different person or a different van to pick him up and maybe that's his situation that he doesn't have the ability to drive or he doesn't have the capabilities to drive or he's autistic and he can't drive I really don't know but I'm not talking about anything out of turn but this evening when I tried to say no to someone for something I didn't want he really wasn't willing to hear me and I didn't like that because when I say I have a position 
on something, when I say I have a condition on something, when I say that I have a preference for something, I sort of expect that a gentleman is going to say And I'm not trying to be disparaging to the gift I was given, but just solving the problem by giving me something doesn't help me to put myself together. You see, a man like me is sort of used to matching. A man like me is sort of used to doing certain things. And while I'm not a elitist, and I'm definitely not a racist, I do get a little tired of people not listening. And that is my biggest issue today. That I can tell people, this is what I'm looking for, and they still won't do that. They will come up to me and try to give me food and every other thing that is not on my priority list. And I sit there and I think, if the situation was reversed, miss, how would you be? What would you be like? How would you feel? I do get a little tired of the law enforcement types that are trying to test to see how they look in the community. And some of them look right, and some of them don't. And openly, it's the ones that don't that end up playing and ruining our life. But in life, we have most of the time to just talk about story, talk about what's going on for the day, talk about things for God's glory. And only when people start to really submit to God, only when they really put themselves in the house of the Lord, do they start to improve their own gifts of God. The gifts from God are never gifts from Satan. Gifts from Satan might exist. It's true. We've certainly seen plenty of movies. We've read or heard about plenty of books. We've listened to the concept of backward masking and ACDC and all the like talking about my sweet Satan, yada, yada, yada. But the point is, only people that play in the shadows, only people that play in the dark, only people that lie, steal, and cheat are the children of Satan. They made a choice when they started that art. The rest of us, however, try to play in the goodness of life. The rest of us try to play in the light of the Lord. But here's the deal. If you choose the right, wrong life partner, if you choose someone who's just a Sunday Christian and not really fully wicked and not really fully passionate about God, you probably aren't doing a good life for yourself. My guess is the relationship might last hot and passionate for a year, and after that, it's just going to fizzle out. And Jesus is not pleased because you've left the house of God. You don't even go to church anymore. You don't even read your Bible anymore. You're not in girl studies anymore. And openly, that masterful bastard that's made to play you, lay you, and stay with you in your home or his has just taken you out of the house of God.